on infectious diseases. I'm Erica Thomas. And I'm Trisha Williams. And we will be talking about trypanema, which is a type of bacteria. Stoplasmosis, a disease that's caused by fungus. And candidiasis, which is a type of fungus. Trypanema is a member of the spirochete family of bacteria. It is a bacterial pathogen that infects humans only. There are four types of trypanema that cause diseases. The first one is trypanema pallidum pallidum, which causes, which is sexually transmitted and causes sexually transmitted this type of trypanema is the most widespread. Um, there are three other types of trypanema. The first one is trypanema pallidum endomycum, which can be abbreviated T pallidum endomycum, T pallidum pertinu, and T keratium. And these three types are non-sexually transmitted. Um, they are not transmitted through sexual contact. And here in the corner, we have a picture of the little spiral-shaped spirochete of trypanema. In the next few slides, we will discuss the structure, disease stages, transmission, diagnosis, treatment and prevention of treatment. First, the structure of treatment. Here you see a picture of the spirochete uh, bacterial structure of treatment of treatment. You have the endoflagella here. There's an axial filament here. And we have the cell membrane, which um, is surrounded on the inside by the periplasm. Base. And here on the outside is the outer membrane of the trypanema. All right. We know that trypanema causes syphilis, and there are several stages of syphilis. Uh, and the first stage is primary syphilis. And in the first stage, you have lesions at the site of the infection within 10 to 21 days following exposure to the bacteria. Um, the secondary stage, you have a body rash, a sore throat, a headache, and muscle pain. At the latent stage or the dormant stage of syphilis, uh, there are no symptoms, and the disease cannot be transmitted at this point. Here we have what is the worst stage of syphilis, and this is the tertiary stage. Um, at this stage, it can affect any tissue or organ. It can cause blindness and paralysis. It can also cause heart failure. And gummas, which are syphilitic lesions, they are rubbery and painful. Um, they are swollen lesions um, that can occur in bones, nervous tissue, or the skin. All right, further discussion of trypanema pallidum, which is the type of trypanema that causes syphilis. Um, of course, it's transmitted by direct contact. That's usually sexual contact. Um, Here is the syphilis bacteria, a um, picture of the bacteria, spiral shaped, spiral key. Um, there's a picture of syphilis on the hand. Um, there's the syphilis lesion here um, on the skin, um, and here on the mouth and lips. And of course, it's typically found at the external genitalia um, on the mouth, um, around the anus on the fingers, on the lips, and then on the nipples. Here, I'll discuss the non-venereal um, 
types of trypanema. These are the ones that are not spread by sexual contact. Um, most of these are um, spread through and by impoverished children that live in unsanitary conditions. The first one is T. pallidum endomycin, that's trypanema pallidum endomycin. It causes a disease called basal. Um, it's seen in children in Africa, Asia, and Australia. And this is spread by contaminated eating utensils. So therefore, um, in basal, um, the initial lesion is usually a small oral lesion um, that can be kind of ignored at first. Um, as it progresses, um, the lesions become larger and they start to develop around the lips and the mouth. And uh, later it can form into gummas, which are the lesions that form on the skin and the bones. Um, and th these can form around the nasal pharyngeal mucous membranes as well. Uh, the next type of trypanema is T. pallidum pertinu, which causes a disease called YAWS. Um, Y'all is seen in tropical South America, Central Africa, and Southeast Asia. And it's spread by contact of fluid draining from lesions. Um, Y'all causes granular skin lesions that are um, not very attractive. They're kind of unsightly. They look very bad, but they're actually pretty painless. But over time, the lesions develop into large destructive draining lesions on the skin, and therefore that's how it's spread by contact of fluid from the lesions, um, those large draining lesions. T. carotium, um, trypanema carotium, um, causes a disease called penta. It is seen in children in Central and South America, um, and it's generally spread by skin to skin contact. Um, and penta, um, after one to three weeks of incubation, um, hard pustule lesions um, called papules will form at the site of the infection. Um, and the papules enlarge and persist for months and years, and they can result in scarring and disfigurement. So all of these pretty much cause um, different types of lesions um, and papules, some of them painful, some of them painless. All right, we have the diagnosis and the treatment of uh, syphilis and the diagnosis and treatment of the non-sexually transmitted, of um, the non-sexually transmitted forms of treatment. Um, there's an antibody test that can be given for the diagnosis of the primary and secondary and congenital syphilis. Um, tertiary syphilis is difficult to diagnose because it mimics other diseases. So it's very hard to diagnose this type of, um, of syphilis. Um, treatments, the treatment for primary and secondary syphilis is the antibiotic penicillin. Um, this is used to treat primary and secondary syphilis. Um, tertiary syphilis is not treatable, um, so it's pretty bad. Um, the non-sexually transmitted types of basal, yaws, and penta can be treated with penicillin, tetracycline, and chloramphenicol. All right, finally, um, for the prevention um, of syphilis and trypanema, um, the bacteria that causes it, um, you should really um, refrain from sexual contact. You should have abstinence um, with someone that, that's infected with syphilis because you don't want it to be transmitted to you. It is highly transmittable. Um, if you so desire to have sexual contact with someone um, that has syphilis, um, you will probably want to be in a um, monogamous relationship. And uh, you want to use a condom to help prevent the transmission. This will only help prevent transmission. This does not mean you're not getting the disease. So prevention is best done um, with abstinence, and that's it for trypanema and syphilis and the non-sexually transmitted types of trypanema. Next we have history.
histoplasmosis. Um, this is a fungal infection. Um, it's caused by the fungus histoplasma capsulatum. Um, this type can be the histoplasma capsulatum with the fungus in it, so it can be airborne and it can be inhaled. Um, this type of fungus survives phagocytosis, so it's pretty strong and it will live inside of macrophages. All right, uh, further discussion of histoplasmosis. About 95% of individuals will be infected with pulmonary histoplasma, and they're asymptomatic. Um, their cases can pretty much resolve without any type of damage. 5% um, of patients that develop clinical histoplasmosis, um, with, will, the histoplasmosis will manifest as one of four diseases, um, which are chronic pulmonary histoplasmosis, chronic cutaneous histoplasmosis, systemic histoplasmosis, and ocular histoplasmosis. And my partner, Trishio, will discuss histoplasmosis in further detail. Histoplasmosis is found in more soil with high levels of nitrogen, for example, like bat and bird pooping. And see here in this um, photo here, you can see where the guy had inhaled the histoplasmosis and the chicken with the bird and bat pooping. The different types is the chronic pulmonary, which you will see severe coughing, night sweats, loss of appetite, and it also can be mistaken for uh, tuberculosis, and that is TB. It has chronic cutaneous, where you have skin lesions, the spread of infections from the lungs. It's systemic. It's seen in AIDS patients um, and people with large, enlarged spleen and liver. It's ocular, which is hypersensitivity reaction in the eye and it's inflammation and redness is a system. The structure is a spiny spore. And as you can see in the picture here, the spines are coming off of the spore. So it's a small, tiny, spiny spore. And it can be diagnosed through skin scrapings, sputum, cerebral spinous fluid, and various tissues. treatment is ketoconazole, which is a cream, and amphotericin B. And that can be through an injection or IV route. Histoplasmosis prevention is to keep a healthy immune system. That's to try to keep all the bacteria out so you wouldn't acquire this type of disease. Our next disease is candidiasis. It is caused by candidiasis African. It's a fungi that can be transmitted between individuals. It affects tissues in almost every body system. It can be localized, seen in individuals with impaired functions of the epithelial layers, or it can be systemic, seen in our immunocompressed individuals, such as people with AIDS. And there are several different types of candidiasis, but we're going to um, give information on four types, and it's orthopharyngeal, oropharyngeal, thrush, vulvovaginal, which is the yeast infection, and cutaneous, which is the skin rash, and gastrointestinal, which is the infection of the stomach and the intestines. With oropharyngeal, the signs and symptoms would be white plaque on the mouth, in the mouth, on the tongue. And the predisposing factors of it is um, diabetes, AIDS, and cancer. 
with vulvo vaginal, signs and symptoms can be creamy white discharge, the burning and painful intercourse. The predisposing factors can be antibiotics, pregnancy, and diabetes. And these can be just any antibiotics that you're taking for any kind of infection. Some uh, will give you uh, an infection more than others, but just different antibiotics can give you um, a yeast infection. Cutaneous. The signs and symptoms is a raised rash in the skin folds, and the predisposing factors for it is you get moisture, heat, um, friction, and sore diaper. Gastrointestinal signs and symptoms is the ulceration of the stomach and, and the intestinal mucosa. And as you see in this picture, it's the, the lining of the esophagus, where you can see where it has the buddy yeast on, it, on the surrounding areas of the esophagus. And the predisposing factors is a hematological cancer. The diagnosis is testing the cluster of budding yeast. It's taking some samples off of your tongue or, or the dis discharge from the vagina, taking different samples of the budding yeast to diagnose candidiasis. And the treatment, the oil treatment is nystatin, which can come in oil drops. It also can come in, uh, in um, tablets. The vagina has um, azole suppositories or creams, or you can use or fluconazole. Well, this concludes our our presentation on trichomonemia, histoplasmosis, and candidiasis. We hope that you enjoyed our presentation and, and learned a lot of information from this presentation.